my name is Michael, and welcome to my almanac. Several months ago, I had this idea to create an incense holder that used smoke as a part of its design. I wanted to model it after an old-fashioned steam locomotive. But instead of coal producing the smoke, this train runs on incense. Of course, a train needs railroad tracks to get anywhere, so I had to make those too. I also wanted to make it blow smoke rings at the press of a button. Here's a cross-section of the train. On the right is the air piston. When a force is applied, a blast of air is pushed through the channel, where it combines with the smoke from the incense cone. To form smoke rings, the outlet of the chimney narrows, which slows down the air's flow around the edges. The center still moves at the same speed, so the net effect is toroidal rotation in the form of a smoke ring. Now that I have the inner mechanism all finished up, I'm going to walk you through how I will put it together. The incense is in cone form and it burns directly below the smokestack. Beneath the cone is an elevated metal stand to protect the wood from burning. The train itself is made out of two parts that sandwich the air piston assembly. The piston is essentially two captive washers and a spring on a bolt. It has a removable wooden cover to hide the screw head and make the button easier to press. Now, let's get started. Here, I'm using the table saw to cut my stock wood into rough blanks. Then I attached them to the CNC bed and found the zero before running a facing pass on the top surface. After that, I used a quarter inch end mill to rough out all of the approximate shapes and forms of the inside cavities. This is the right half of the train here. Finally, I switched to an eighth inch end mill to do the roughing and contour passes for the outside of the train. Finally, I switched to a ball end mill. This end mill is smooth finish and I make a lot of passes that are very close to one another in order to get it to conform to the final shape that I'm looking for for the inside. After that, the inside of the train was finished and I flipped it over and started working on the outside. It's really important to keep the bed free of any dust or debris that might mess up the part's positioning during the flip. So here I'm brushing that clean. Then I used some CA glue to attach the part to the work table upside down. The piece of aluminum in the back there is to keep the part's x-axis parallel to the ways of the machine. So once I had that glued up, I could start cutting. I started off by using a larger half-inch bit to do all the roughing operations on the outside of the train. I switched to a finer bit that could reach into those smaller areas, and once that was finished, I changed out to a ball end mill for the finishing passes to bring the surface into the shape and texture that I was looking for. Next, I did that same procedure for the other half of the train. Here you can see the reason why I had the bar of aluminum set up on the CNC bed earlier. It's to keep the inside hole and the outside smokestack lined up properly during the flip. After that, I used the orbital sander to smooth out the inside surfaces of the train. I had a little bit of chip out on the thinnest part of the smokestack, the second smokestack. So I filed those down to be flat and then sanded those off camera. Next, I started working on the bottom plunger for the air piston. Once the train is assembled, I'll have no way of accessing this part. So I decided to make it out of aluminum because then I can drill and tap a hole through the center and use thread locker to stop the piston from coming loose after hundreds of smoke rings. After that, I started cutting out the button and button cover from a piece of poplar wood that I had. Unfortunately, the only piece I had was thicker than I needed, so I had to mill down pretty far before getting to a usable thickness. But altogether, those parts went pretty smoothly. Next up, I started cutting the railroad tracks. I cut them from a piece of mahogany I had laying around, and it was also thicker than I needed so I had to layer it down a little bit before I could get started. Then I cut the rails out, and 
and then the ties. Finally, the indentation for the incense cup. And then I cut the whole thing out. Next, I put together the air piston assembly. Now, after the train is glued together, there is no way to access this assembly, so before I glue it together, I have to make sure that everything works as smoothly as possible. This includes sanding down the plunger so that there's no friction with the inner wooden cavity, and also binding together all the components on the plunger with thread locker so that there's no changes in the position of any of these components once the train is glued together. The spring rests on a ledge within the wooden cavity to pop the button back up when it's not being pressed. Next, I could start the gluing process. It's really important here to put a thin layer of glue on the inner surfaces of the train, especially around both the plunger mechanism and the edges of the smokestack. And this is because any glue that seeps through these edges could either bind together the piston or prevent the smoke rings from coming out in a clean shape. So I was very careful to have a thin layer of glue around those areas especially. I fitted the two halves of the train together, making sure the plunger was seated properly in its ledge. Wood glue requires constant pressure to dry properly and create a strong seal. So I put a whole bunch of clamps on this thing and let it dry overnight. Time to take these clamps off. It's a good sign. All right, looks like it's glued together. Now to sand it all up and test it out. Here I'm using an oil-based spray polyurethane as my finish. I chose this because it brings out a lot of the wood's natural color, and because when it's completely dry it acts as a flame retardant barrier, protecting the surface of the wood. And on the inside of the smokestack I also used a standard flame resistant coating to make that more resilient to the burning incense. Now I'm going to let the wood dry with the finish for about four hours and then I'll hit it with another coat. And finally it's finished. I'm proud to present the train of thought. This project took me a lot of time and a lot of prototypes before I finally got it working the way I wanted it to. So if you like the video, please do consider leaving a like and sharing it with someone else who you think might enjoy. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.